I'm here to tell you guys that those individual blog posts, while engaging and hopefully great traffic drivers of their own, can be turned into not only a thing that makes you say, at parties, I'm an author, and something that you can also use to market whatever you are blogging about. I'm not on the screen. I'm not on the screen. Technical difficulties. Keep talking. I'll try to get this for you. Well, anyway, um, so I can at least talk to you without uh, my slides up there. So. Basically, what I do for a living is I write content for my clients, and eventually we end up doing a lot of similar content. A lot of our clients are attorneys, personal injury, divorce, things like that, and you end up writing very similar topics as individual blog posts. We got to thinking, wow, these could actually be turned into chapters of an ebook. And so that's what my company started doing. We started taking our clients' pre written content and repurposing it into an ebook. That's not to say that we just publish a bunch of blog posts as an ebook, because not only does that not have as much value as a full on new ebook, but that's also not giving our clients a lot of value. So, what we do is we take very well performing blog posts on their site and we'd say, okay, we'd organize them in a very logical format, such as if you got into a car accident, here's seven steps to take after a car accident. You know, call the police, get your injuries treated document all of your medical expenses and whatnot, call an attorney, call your insurance company, so on and so forth. We would flesh out their blogs that we've already written and rewrite them, maybe update some statistics if we use car crash statistics or if legislation changed about uh, the local um, insurance laws. We would update everything and then we would make it into a digestible format. Our eBooks usually run somewhere between 20 and 30 pages. Um, could be a little longer if we throw in um, some images or some graphics, but it's to say that you don't need to write Lord of the Rings again and have, you know, hundreds of pages in this ebook. If you want to go that gung ho, I'm not going to stop you, but is this auto playing now? I don't want you to auto play. Stop. No. Okay. Well, actually, that brings me up to speed here, so let's pause and go back one. There we go. Um, so like I said, you look for well-performing blog posts, and in this case, this would be your content audit. Uh, you can do this very easily in both WordPress itself, as you can see the top posts and pages here, your views, or you can do it through Google Analytics by going into your behavior and seeing your um, pages and your content. So. Talk to your analytics person if someone else handles your web traffic or if you use, there's a ton of plugins that do that as well. I'm not here to talk about that. Um, but basically, find what's working for you and utilize that as your momentum to start your ebook. The next step is to organize your ebook. As I was saying before, if you have a step by step thing, like if you have a cooking blog, uh, you might want to do step by steps for how to repurpose garbage left over from making a dish. So, like when I do a chicken, I always butcher a whole chicken and I always have like wing tips and the backbone and whatnot. I save that and I make soup stock. So you would do, you know, different steps for things like that. Uh, if you're a car nut and you like to do tutorials on how to replace an engine, you could do step by step on how to replace an engine in some kind of car. Um, so you want to organize logically in that case if you're doing step by steps or if you just have blogs about the same kind of general topic, like if you talk a lot about, um, like I'm from Orlando, so we do the Disney parks. If you talk a lot about how you have a child with a peanut allergy and you're always saying, oh, well, we don't only eat at this restaurant because they're all, you know, peanut allergy friendly, you could do an entire blog about where the best places are for people with allergies to eat in the Disney parks. Um, don't be afraid to add extra chapters too when it helps the flow of your book. So if you haven't blogged about something yet, but you have three other blogs about that topic, make that fourth blog into part of your ebook. And then a marketing point there is you can market extra content not found on my blog already. That's something that's always a good enticing thing when you're trying to actually sell a book because no one wants to buy a book of blogs they can already read on the internet. But if you add in extra content that's fresh in the book, that's a better sell. Then you write. 
like I said before, you can just copy your blog post as the ebook chapters. People have done that before, it does work. But you want to always give your readers something of extra value because that shows you're invested and what you're giving is more than just trying to get another buck out of it. Um, as I said before, 20 to 30 pages, don't try to write a novel. You can even be as short as 10 pages if you're giving substantial information. You don't just want words on paper. You always want to enhance. I always design a cover for my ebook because if you end up in someone like Amazon Marketplace on the Kindle Marketplace or um, on iPhones, uh, books, uh, newsstand and whatnot, you have a cover. And I'm sure all of you have seen the, like the 99 cent or the free ones that just have like text on white and or maybe some really bad graphic. Put a little thought into it. You can even go on Fiverr.com and say, hey, someone designed me an ebook cover. I wrote a book about making soup stock. So, you know, just a picture of a pot and some nice text, and bam, you're done. Um, you can add images within the content to provide natural pauses and breaks so it's not just wall after wall of text, especially if it's images that are from your own experiences. So if you blog a lot about personal stuff, use your own photos because not only do you not have to pay for stock images or worry about copyrights, but that's also just giving a better connection to what you're doing. Adding video in ebooks is possible. Will it actually animate? No, but you can do hyperlinks and QR codes that will link to your YouTube videos. That also drives traffic to your YouTube page if you have a YouTube page. Then you publish. Most ebook reading platforms love PDFs, so does everyone's personal computer, your cell phone, pretty much any digital device can read a PDF. So that is the easiest and stressless format that you can publish to. If you want to get on iBooks, Kindle, or Nook, um, you can learn how to format them. Just honestly, just Google it. Uh, those are links that um, I assume our slides are going to be available publicly. So you'll be able to click through to them. But like iBooks, if you actually search Apple's uh, service database, they'll tell you how to do it in their thing. Um, Nook is a little harder to find actual instructions on, so but that's because they have their whole proprietary format. And then marketing. Uh, not to say that you really have to market your ebook. You could just put it on your own site and say, hey, look, if you like my blog, you can read it all right here in this nice little neat book. I would always start by offering your book for free. We do that for our attorney clients where we say, hey, download our free guide to what to do after a car crash because that's giving their potential clients valuable information. And then at the end, it's basically a marketing ploy that says, reach out to me for more information because this isn't actually legal advice. This is more common sense advice. And if you really want legal advice, obviously I can't give it to you for free. So call me, schedule an appointment and we'll talk. Always write a blog post to announce your new ebook because the cycle of life, blogs turn into ebooks, ebooks turn into blogs, and so on and so forth. Plus, that's also something that people can pick up and resyndicate for you, so on and so forth. Um, adding a widget to your homepage that shows off your awesome books is a great idea because it's always right there front and center. I've got a free ebook. So someone goes to your blog and they're like, oh yeah, she's a blogger. Oh, she's got an ebook? Whoa. We got it. We got a publisher here. You know, we got an author. Um, you can now promote yourself as an author because you have published an actual ebook, and you can also distribute it using some great um, WordPress plugins. Easy Digital Downloads is my personal favorite. They make selling any kind of digital content, whether it be a theme or um, a PDF of instructions, super easy. They integrate with like everything. I love them. Beyond your book, you're now a published author. People have downloaded your book. Presumably when they download your book, you will ask them for like their name and their email address because that's just good practice when you're offering something as a download. You now have their email addresses. You can start an automation follow-up sequence with MailChimp or some other email platform, but I love MailChimp because they have the cutest mascots and they sponsor WordCamps, so yay. Um, <laughs> And I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, by the way. I just have love. Uh, so automation, uh, if you are selling any kind of product, like if you run a cooking blog and you have your own line of secret spice that you sell, you can use that to say, hey, you downloaded my ebook on recipes for making soup stock, so now buy my you know, spice mix or whatever. Uh, you can also start an automation sequence to let them know about new blog posts that you have, or if you have a speaking engagement coming up at a WordCamp, something like that. 
Um, you also have the opportunity to just start a newsletter, which would integrate them into getting your blog posts on a regular basis. So some final thoughts. Um, if you're looking to increase blog exposure, definitely start out with the free ebook, and then you can eventually put it up for sale once it gains some momentum. Um, you can use your email list to your advantage for newsletters, social networking, et cetera, but don't inf uh, forget to include an opt out. Always, you know, you're selling them a product or giving them the free product and let them opt out because that's just good practice. And release revised editions is necessary. If you included statistics or whatever, don't feel bad about putting out a version two when you have something new because then you're gaining a cult following. Uh, so if you have any questions about eBooks and whatnot, find me out in the hallways. I'll be here the rest of the weekend and I hope you have a great rest of the WordCamp. Thank you.